Magnate, Hug It Out, by Lincoln Purse. I'm having trouble sleeping. That's happened to me before. Yes, also me. You know what helps sometimes? Counting sheep. Ha, huh. except for in Belarus, we are count goats. What about warm milk? I've heard that works. Maybe you're not enough tired when you lie down. Yeah, what time do you go to bed? Bed? I meant I'm having trouble sleeping in here. Mrs. Godfrey is so stinking loud that, oop, wait, she stopped talking. You're so lucky, Sherman. All you do is lie around in your wood shavings. You don't have to go to school like we do. No tests, no homework, no screaming teachers. And a four-year lifespan. Shut up, kid. So lucky. Mrs. Godfrey, Sherman seems lonely. Can we give him some company? You're not getting another girl, Bill, Gina. No, I mean another kind of company. Like a little toy or something. I suppose that would be fine. That's more like it. This is so humiliating. What the? Gina, did you put this ugly thing in Sherman's cage? Yes, I did. He was lonely. I provided him with some company. A plastic troll isn't company, pinhead. Company means other living things, like us. Come here, everyone. Hi, Sherman. Look over here. Sherman, hi, pal. Somebody flush me. Sherman, don't be sad. You're so cute. I'm on gerbil duty this week, Gina, so I get to decide what goes in Sherman's cage. Here, take your stupid toy. It's not a toy, it's a troll doll. It's a cheesy trinket. Sherman deserves something more dignified. I think at this point the dignity ship has sailed. How about a cookie monster puppet? No. I feel bad for Sherman, eating the same thing every single day. I'm going to show him there's more to life than pellet food. Here, Sherman, try cheese doodle. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I think he's smiling. My work is done. Step back, Q-tip. You have a cold. I don't want you to get Sherman sick. What? Oh, come on, ma'am. I don't think gerbils get the same illnesses as people. Ah, chew. I guess we'll find out, won't we? I have newfound sympathy for my cousin, Howard, the lab rat. Sherman, hey Sherman. He's hiding under his pile of wood shavings. He probably needs some peace and quiet. What do you mean? Think about what his life is like. Can he go wherever he wants? No, he's kept in a small confined space. Can he do anything he wants? No, there's nothing to do in a glass cage. There's always someone watching him, bothering him, trying to make him perform. He's a small, powerless creature who always has these huge, terrifying figures looming over him. Try to imagine how that feels. Well, look who the cat dragged in. Hi, Gramps. What brings you here, my boy? Dad had to travel for work. So we're here for a couple days. Ah, Ellen too. Why am I the last to hear about this? Probably because it wasn't announced on Sports Center. Don't start, Marge. 
Put your stuff in the guest rooms, kids, and then we'll make some supper. What a treat having Ellen and Nate here. You're lucky, Vern, getting to spend so much time with our grandchildren. The only grandchildren we'll ever have. Yes, Mother. Four phases, Mr. Sulu. Are you still dating that nice Gordy, hun? Uh huh. He's wonderful, but I just wish there were a way to know whether he's the one or not. I wish I could be sure. I mean, when were you sure about Gramps? I'm still deciding. Marge, I can't find my pants. What are you guys talking about? Oh, girl stuff. Ellen's wondering if her Gordy is the one. Yes, definitely yes. Gordy's awesome. He's nice. He's funny. He's smart. He's Ellen's perfect soulmate. He also gets you free swag from the comic store. Okay, so he's my perfect soulmate. The point is. His family. Gran and Ellen are yakking about Romans, a subject I know well. Snort. What do you know about Romans? Plenty, father of mine. Do you have a girlfriend, Uncle Ted? Indeed, I met her playing Plants vs Zombies. That sounds about right. So where is she? Fiji. Ted has a girlfriend. Since when? I think he made her up. I did not make her up. Granted, I have met her in person, but she's real. The two of us have chatted online for hours. And as you can see from her photo, she's quite the looker. Son, that's a picture of Beyonce. Even I know that from reading people in my proctologist's waiting room. Okay, infielders, take your positions. Time to practice some situational baseball. I'll call out each situation before putting the ball in play. I might say something like, "Runner on first, two outs," and if the ball comes your way, you need to know what to do. Got it? Got it? Yup. Okay then. Bases loaded. One out. Spring training during mud season is not without its challenges. Is that a bunt? Graham, can you sign this field trip permission form? Sure, sweetie. Where are you going? To the art museum. What fun! And it says here they're looking for chaperones. Vern, how about getting some culture? That's what I'm doing, Marge. Wheel of Fortune. Mister Rosa, my grandparents are here to chaperone. Great, thank you. We like to be helpful. Have you ever visited an art museum before? Once or twice, but I'm afraid I don't know much about art. I do. Got a tattoo here. That's a masterpiece. No, Vern. Mr. and Mrs. Wright, your job isn't to talk to the kids about the art they're seeing. That's the job of the museum docents. Your role is simply to keep track of your group and make certain the kids are well behaved and respectful. We can do that. After all. We raised two boys of our own, one of whom is currently butt stuck to a sofa playing World of Warcraft. We are trying to be patient. This group, you're with me. This group, you'll follow Miss Clark. And this group, you go with Mr. and Mrs. Wright. Come on, kids. Oh man. How come we got to be with the old people? I want you to wedge that kid. It shall be done. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Kelleher, 
and I'm a docent here at the museum. I'll be showing you some of our wonderful paintings and sculptures and telling you about the artists who created them. Now, before we begin, does anyone need to use the restroom? Yo, we're seniors, we need our pit stops. Children, pay attention to the docent, please, over here. Hey, come here. Vern, help me coral these kids. Vern? What kind of gift shop doesn't sell junior mints? Vern! I don't want to do my oral report. You'll be fine, Chad. But I'm nervous. Just do what my gramps always says. Imagine everyone in their underwear. Everyone? Everyone. You're up, Chad. Uh, I made it through my report, but now I'm going to have nightmares for the rest of my life. It's awfully nice of you and your wife to chaperone your grandson's field trip. I love it when the museum hosts school groups. I used to be a school teacher myself, third and fourth grade. Those children were, um, I'm sorry, but the battery in my hearing aid is dead, so I can't understand a word you're saying. You don't have a hearing aid, Fern. She doesn't know that. So you're a museum guard, eh? I feel sorry for you, guy. You're on your feet all day. You have to wear a cheesy polyester uniform. And all you do is tell people not to touch the art. Yeah, wow, I'd hate being you. Not only does he have a lousy job, he's not very friendly. Hey, listen, buddy. I wasn't trying to criticize your job a minute ago. What I meant was it's a job that would be tough for me. I wouldn't like it. But you like it, I can tell, and no wonder. It's a good job, a real good job. Mister, I just threw up by that sculpture over there. Well, gotta go. What do you think of the paintings, Gramps? I like the old ones, the older, the better. If a painting's like a hundred years old or more, I like it. But the modern ones, I don't get. I generally have no interest in stuff that's younger than I am. And yet, he finds a way to enjoy the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. I happen to like the exotic locations. What do you think this painting's all about? It's probably symbolic. It looks like a guy with a duck, but it's probably not a guy with a duck. I'll bet it's supposed to mean something else. Say, man, what's this painting about? Read the title, sir. Guy with a duck? Dang, faked me out. Let's go, kids. Time to head back to school. Jump on the bus. Boys, I'm talking to you. Come on, get on the bus, or I'll tell all the teachers how he snuck away from the group to check out the art of the nude exhibit. I know how the pre-adolescent mind works. I wonder why. Hey, here come Lisa and Sally. Ooh, haughty alert. Ahem. <clears throat> Hi, ladies. Hi, guys. We're doing a spring sports review for the school newspaper. Will you tell our readers your goals for the upcoming season? I want to win every game. I pitch and bat at least 350. I want to hit over 400 drive in two runs per game and win the MVP award. What about you, Chad? Me? I just want to have fun and help my team any way I can. Oh, that's so sweet. Can I change my answer? Chad's Chadness is hard to compete with. Uh-oh, here comes Whitey. 
What's wrong with Whitey? He likes everyone and everyone likes him. I didn't say I don't like him, Francis. It's just, well, it's... I'm not into the Tsup hugs. Tsup, ha ha, ow. What have you got against why Tsup hugs? They're just not my thing. Tsup, not everyone is a hugger, you know. Some of us think hugging should be reserved for only the most special occasions. Darn, I broke my shoelace. Let me hold you. Oh, brother. Ah, here comes Whitey. I'm dreading this. Tsup, Tsup, Tsup. Hey, that's weird. He hugs everybody. What happened? Why didn't Whitey hug me? I thought you didn't want him to hug you. Yeah, but I don't want to be the only one he doesn't hug. Now everyone will think I'm an unhuggable loser. They won't think you're an unhuggable loser. Hey, girls, check out the loser. Wow, he's unhuggable. Whitey, how come you didn't hug me back there? Hmm, you didn't seem like you wanted one. Look, I can't be the only kid in school not to get hugged, so lay one on me. Sorry, ma'am. I'm not feeling it. Oh, come on. Sorry, Nate, but I can't do hugs on demand. It's got to be spontaneous. Oh, Whitey, come on. One hug. Just one hug. Oh, all right. But don't get your hopes up. I'm spoken for. Cripes. It's a beautiful day at Fenway Park, right, Joel? You said it, Dave. The fans are hoping to see some great plays from the Red Sox rookie sensation, Nate Wright. Well, they won't have to wait long, Joel. Here's a majestic fly ball over Wright's head. He sprints back, back, to the track, to the wall. He leaps and makes a tremendous catch. Where does such coordination come from? It's probably hereditary. Or maybe not. You're right, Dave. Some play succeed despite the genes. What's up? I'm working on my Civil War project, Teddy. What's your topic? My topic? My topic is epic storytelling, amigo. I can't capture the vastness of the Civil War in a single topic. I'm writing an entire novel. War Leave the Blue-Grey Bruise by Nate Wright. Blue-Grey, see what I did there? Chapter 1 Private Charles Chuck Manley's chest swelled with pride as he pulled on his blue woolen uniform after washing his face in the slow-moving waters of Bull Run Creek. I can't believe I'm actually a member of the Union Army and that we are about to do battle against the grey-clad soldiers of the Confederacy. He thought to himself while enjoying a hearty breakfast. A gun roared in the distance and suddenly a cannonball flew by, knocking his doughnut from his hand. It landed on the ground and got all covered in with dirt and mud making it all gross and stuff. It was going to be a long war. What is this? My Civil War paper, obviously. The only thing obvious about it is that you're making stuff up. It's called historical fiction, Francis. I'm building a dramatic story on top of a rock-solid foundation of factualness. There were no flying monkeys at Shiloh, you pinhead. They're a metaphor. Nate, you can't write about flying monkeys at the Battle of Shiloh. I told you, Francis. I'm using them as a metaphor. A metaphor for war itself. So war is like a flying monkey? Right. And pieces like mint chocolate chip ice cream. 
Hence, the scene in the Ben and Jerry's factory. Bingo! Private Charles Chuck Manley couldn't understand what was happening that fateful day at Gettysburg. Again and again, he had fired his rifle, but it kept missing his target. Then, inside his head, he heard the voice of General Ulysses S. Grant. Trust the force, Chuck. It told him. Trust the force. Chuck closed his eyes and squeezed the trigger. When he opened his eyes again, he found that he'd shot one of his own men by mistake. Luckily, it was only a flesh wound. Anyway, about five minutes later, the rebels retreated. Chuck smiled knowingly. Yes, the force was indeed strong in Gettysburg that day. Here's my paper, Mrs. Godfrey. Why does it say a civil war faction? That's my own word, fiction and fact, faction. It's an unconventional approach, but if you read it with an open mind, you'll be blown away. It was a dark and stormy night that morning, and its Confederate guns exploded onto the tropical island of Fort Sumter, Louisiana. F. Mr. Galvin, are we really having a quiz today? Yes, indeed. You've known about it for over a week, but we didn't finish the in-class review. Yeah, you should have finished the review on your own. Plus, he never explained part two of chapter twelve because of that fire drill. Remember, everything you need to know about chapter twelve is in the textbook. But the textbook is so confusing. Not if you read it carefully. Sit down, boys. He is going through with the quiz. We are dead. Leave this to me, boys, Mr. Galvin. Will you tell us about the time you shared a cab with Florence Henderson? It was a windswept day on the sidewalks of Manhattan. You're a genius. So true. Ten twelve a.m. Ten thirteen a.m. Swip, wham. Ten fourteen a.m. Sir, Nate Wright is here to inform you of a pending lawsuit. Principal Nichols, I'm suing the school for providing an unsafe environment. Unsafe? In what way? I slipped in a puddle in the hallway near the computer lab. I could have been killed. But you're okay. Yeah, I'm fine. You're new at this lawsuit thing, aren't you, son? Huh? Oh, I mean, ow, ow, my back. Nate. I'm sorry you slipped on a wet floor, but that hardly entitles you to sue the school, especially since you don't seem to be injured—not physically. But what about my emotional trauma? Emotional trauma from a puddle? No, no. From Mrs. Godfrey, I switched issues. I want to sue the school, and you don't want me to. Maybe we can compromise. If you're to ahem, <clears throat> give me a settlement. You won't have to go through a messy trial. Uh huh. Uh huh. What do you have in mind? A modest cash payment of twenty-five thousand dollars. How about you just leave my office before I throw your butt in detention? That works too. How did it go with the principal? He made me drop my lawsuit. It's not fair. It's the school's fault that I slipped and fell. I should be paid for my pain and suffering. It won't have to be a big payment. It won't even have to be money. It could be just a small ah.、Uh, Token, of you know, I have half a roll of Mentos in my purse. Deal. Two of the sides of the near strategy, one dollar, and right here, almost invisible to the naked eye, was a puddle, 
my foot hit it and down i went oh hi i wonder if private school principals have these problems my head hit the floor and everything went dark and dad what are you doing lining up my tea shot you're aiming at the snack bar i know i'm compensating i took a natural draw so i aim way right watch this curve back onto the uh oh clunk thought grandma are you okay grandma what happened i don't know she just went down i think something hit her you're right look at that lump on her forehead here's what did it a golf ball grandma how many fingers am i holding up i think i'll call it a day good idea it's coming what is the bus no something bad i can feel it what kind of bad what do you mean it's getting closer closer what is what is just got the new edition of fantastic facts yeah here's an interesting fact about calvin coolidge francis stop we don't need to hear any of your useless trivia the only good trivia is trivia about star trek the next generation what what makes count cella diana troy good trivia and calvin coolidge bad trivia calvin coolidge didn't do his job in a skin tight on unitard cleavage 1 coolidge 0 It's ridiculous that he only pay attention to Star Trek the next generation trivia. That's the way I am, Francis. But there's so much good trivia out there. Let me share it with you. No, I'm not listening. Just let me tell you one thing, one factoid. No, cut it out. Calvin Coolidge is the only president born on the 4th of July. help former presidents thomas jefferson and john adams both died on july 4th 1826 but there's been only one president born on the 4th of july who was he nate you won't get this you won't believe this <clears throat> well nate Who's the only president born on the 4th of July? I believe that would be Calvin Coolidge. What? Yes. Yes, that's right. Calvin Coolidge is correct. Nicely done, Nate. That's extra credit for you. You're welcome. I've always been a bit of a trivia buff. Now, Do you admit a little trivia can come in handy sometimes? Thanks to my Calvin Coolidge trivia, he just got extra credit from Mrs. Godfrey. Okay, okay, you're right, but that doesn't mean I want you burying me with piles of useless facts about Calvin Coolidge, who, by the way, had a pet raccoon named Rebecca. He used to wander around the White House. Not only that, stop, stop, stop. I'm going to cure you of your cat phobia once and for all. What? Wait, I don't want you throwing some cat at me. Not a real cat, Pinhead. You've got to work your way up to the real cats. We'll start with a puppet what are you talking about i'm talking about practicing you're using a puppet to practice that's all cut it out francis meow relax i'm trying to help you meow stop stop meow meow you're freaking me out this neighborhood is getting very strange i miss the days when kids stayed inside and played video games ah the arcade 
Wanna play air hockey? Whoa, 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 what? Some clown named T A beat my high score on Gas Giant. This is an outrage. I've had the high score on this game for over a year. Who dares to challenge my supremacy? Yo. What do you need, kid? I'm busy. You called me out. I do believe. Called you? Wait. Are you T A? I am T A. So you're the kid who beat my high score on gas joint. No, I did not beat your score. Then who? I destroyed your score. So you beat my high score, huh? Big whoop! I'll just beat yours. Good luck with that. Watch me knock our friend T A down to second place where he belongs. What does T A stand for anyway? The T is for Thor. Thor, and the A is for Almighty. Kaboom! Dang it! Ha! Take that, Thor. Whatever your real name is, I beat your score. A temporary setback. I'll regain my crown. Oh yeah! How? You can't even reach the controls. Easily remedied. Minion, my throne. I'm not your minion. And B, it's a footstool. Must we argue over semantics? You're in trouble, Nate. T A is closing in on your score, and he's still got all his life left. No, no. Yes, yes. My victory is inevitable at this point. The only thing that can derail my moment of triumph is Bradley. I told you I don't want you wasting your money on these games. We are going home, but but mom, now. I knew the Almighty wasn't his real name. Very perceptive. It's great to be the king of gas joints again. You're only the king because that kid's mom dragged him out of the arcade. So what? At the end of the day, the bottom line is the final score. Nobody remembers the details. I mean, does anyone remember that the Patriots won the Super Bowl because of Pete Carroll's boneheaded play calling? Yes, I don't want to talk about it. What's our plan B? What do you mean? This is private property. Where are we gonna play frisbee golf if this guy kicks us off his land? Teddy, relax. That guy's a hippie. He's like old granola and what not. He's an organic farmer. So, so hippies and frisbees go together. This guy won't mind a few frisbees flying around. He'll probably want to join us. Trust me, this guy won't kick us off his land. We won't need a plan B. How about a plan C? I thought hippies were supposed to be mellow. Cheese doodles have got to be the least dignified snack of all time. They leave orange powder all over everything. They stain your clothes. They stain your skin. They get stuck in your teeth and stay there for hours. They make your breath smell like tube socks. Frankly, they're disgusting. Oh, how I love them! He makes this speech every day. Cheese doodles, cheese doodles, cheese doodles, cheese doodles. You don't look so good. What's wrong, Nate? Yeah, you look awful. The unthinkable has happened. I, I think I'm sick of cheese doodles. Ha ha! Right, sure you are. Then I guess you won't mind if I eat these. Go ahead, take 'em. Wait, what? He's serious. How can you be sick of cheese doodles? You eat them every day. Maybe that's the problem, Teddy. He's eaten so many of them; they've completely lost their appeal.
I can't accept that. People don't go from loving something to hating it in five seconds. P Pete Carroll? Yeah, Pete Carroll. We are not talking about that. For my entire life, whenever I looked at a cheese doodle, I felt happy. Then sickened, I'm nauseated, I'm repulsed. Sniff, sniff. I'm intrigued. He's back. So now you like cheese doodles again? Just like that? Two minutes ago, they made you sick. What can I say? It is a phase. I was temporarily insane. Narf, 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 narf. Temporarily. I'm appalled, yes. I can't turn away. Hey, school picture guy? Indeed, on assignment for the local paper. Here to get some shots of the game. Not the game, on the field. I'm doing a photo essay of the scene around the game. The parents, the grandparents, the volunteers, the teenagers running the concession stand. That's what interests me. The community of baseball. The old-time apple pie values. All I need for the perfect photo essay is a title. Hey, ump, take your strike down and stick it where the sun don't shine. How about psycho mom wigs out in bleachers? A bit more tabloid than I had in mind, but I like it. Batter up. Go get him, Nate. Get it started, Nate. This guy throws hard, and he's a little wild too. I better stay awake. He might drill me right in the thwack. Ow! You got hit in the head, Nate. Take it easy. I'm okay. I can play. Oh, no you don't. Take a seat on the bench. The bench? Right. Yeah, the bench. And where is that exactly? Medic? Well, your batting helmet took most of the impact. But that doesn't mean you weren't mildly concussed. But I'm not dizzy or anything. Symptoms can sometimes occur later. We'll have you take it easy for a week or so. Keep an eye on things. A week? I can't play ball for a week, but my team needs me. Son, you're batting. 212. They'll live. I can't believe I've got to sit around for a week doing nothing. Whoa. No TV. Doctor's orders, Nate. No screen time of any kind. And no reading either. You could trigger some concussion symptoms. So what can I do? You can rest your eyes. I'll go to the library and borrow some books on tape. Soon. My name is Junie B. Jones. It wasn't a great selection. Kill me now. So you're totally symptom free? Yeah, but the doctor wants me to take it easy for a couple more days. Huh? Well, I guess it's good to be careful with brains. Right. Especially my brain. My brain's just not any brain. I heartily agree. This baby is like a Cadillac. I was just thinking, what if I were to get a serious concussion? I mean, concussions can mess you up. What if my brain gets all damaged? And what not? What a tragedy. Can you imagine if the world were deprived of my brain? Imagine it? No. Dream about it? Yes. How about depriving the world of our mouth? Listen to this, Teddy. He 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 he. What is that? That, my friend, is a warm chuckle. Uh, okay. I've been working on it for weeks. I've always wanted to have a warm chuckle in my bag of tricks. What for? As a conversation starter. An icebreaker. Girls can't resist a warm chuckle. 
It puts them at ease. Watch how it works on those lovely ladies over there. I barely noticed it. Well, I notice it. He 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 he. Handy tip: Don't use your warm chuckle on a girl who's upset about a really big zit on her forehead. I'm sure you're aware, Nate, that you're in danger of needing to attend summer school. Uh huh. I'd say some tutoring is in order before the final exam. Okay, I'll ask Francis. No, young Francis are friends. You'll only end up distracting each other. I'll select your tutor. No, 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 no. Mrs. Godfrey, wait! Before you assign me a tutor, can I suggest someone? I already told you, Francis isn't. No, not Francis. I was thinking of Sienna. Nate, Sienna is not going to tutor you, but she and I have good chemistry. It's my understanding that Sienna has good chemistry with most of the boys in the sixth grade, right? So it's a yes. Nate, I think the best tutor for you would be Gina. Gina? It's obvious. That's who you've decided on. So just say it. Well, actually, I assumed you and Gina couldn't get along well enough to work together, but you clearly feel differently. Gina, it is. I hate myself. Hey. Mrs. Godfrey says I'm supposed to tutor you. Snort. Dream on, Gina. I don't need any tutoring. Just because Godfrey assigned you to me doesn't mean that she didn't assign me. She said you asked for me. Ooh. No, I didn't. No, I didn't.